people only accept, believe, and surrender to the thoughts that are equal to their emotional state. They'll never accept, believe, and surrender to any other thoughts that are not equal to their emotional state. So if you get a diagnosis, and the first emotion you feel after the diagnosis is fear or sadness, you can think positively all you want mm -hmm. <laughs> with 5%, now this is science, 5% of your conscious mind. But who you are by the time you're 35 years old is a subconscious program of beliefs, perceptions, attitudes, emotional reactions, unconscious habits, and behaviors. So then the person gets the diagnosis, they're feeling fear, thoughts are the language of the brain, feelings are the language of the body. They're thinking positively with the 5% of their conscious mind, but they're feeling fear. And they could do that all they want, but it's never going to get beyond their analytical mind and begin to have an effect on the body. So mind and body are working in opposition. That means also then that if you can change a person's emotional state to gratitude, uh, to inspiration, to hope, uh, to love, that means that they'll accept, believe, and surrender to the thoughts equal to that emotional state and they'll begin to program their autonomic nervous system into a different pharmacy of chemicals. Now, let's just make this very clear now. Mm -hmm. In placebo studies, 81% of people who have uh, depression, if they're in a placebo study, and 81% of those people who are taking the placebo actually respond as well to the placebo as they would to an antidepressant, 81%. That's a pretty high yeah. study. Mm -hmm. What that means is they're making their own pharmacy of antidepressants right within them. The nervous system is the greatest pharmacist in the world. So what's the relevance, uh, the significance of that? The significance is really simple. When people begin to change their emotional state, they begin to alter who they are. It may take more than one attempt at this because in that placebo study they took the placebo for six to eight weeks now the pill represented the possibility of them getting well their thought when they start looking forward to or anticipating getting better and they feel inspired when you combine a clear intention with an elevated emotion you're moving into a new state of being now the brain and body are no longer living in the past the brain and body are living in the future in the present moment and they're beginning to produce substantial neurological, biological, and genetic changes in their body. But the placebo study for depression, that person took the pill for six to eight weeks, which means you may actually have to change your state of being for six to eight weeks before you begin to see the change. So I don't want this to be a panacea where mm -hmm. you do it once and you're better. Our students sure. have healed themselves a very significant very, very, uh, um, most almost predestined genetic conditions that medical science had no solution for. Not just one student with one condition, but other students with the same condition. Now we're seeing a trend. But it took them, some of those people, two years to do it by thought alone. So they wanted it more than their sleep. They wanted it more than their pain. They wanted it more than their social interactions or social engagements. They wanted it more than breakfast. To them, it was the most important thing. So every single day, they took the placebo by thought alone. To transform means to consistently alter one's thoughts, actions, and emotions within the same surroundings until those surroundings themselves begin to change in response. Your life remains static until you initiate this change. Many enter meditation seeking this transformational energy, which is profoundly contagious. Our studies demonstrate that individuals can profoundly influence others. Kindness begets kindness, love begets love, and care begets care. This evolving consciousness should be your goal, to consistently cultivate that transformative sensation post-meditation. Internalizing this feeling enough empowers you to evoke it independently. No one else can grant you this sensation. It's yours to develop. The time invested, whether an hour, two, or three, becomes inconsequential when reaching that state of bliss. Even during the most challenging moments, perseverance matters most. 
Frequently, we make excuses and settle for mediocrity, relying on external events to propel us forward. This dependency is a subconscious agreement that communal effort surpasses individual initiative. Yet, embracing the quantum model means tapping into a collective consciousness daily, irrespective of physical proximity. Allocating time daily for personal reflection benefits the world at large. Disconnecting from devices and external stimuli before meditation ensures clarity. Prepare by resolving unresolved issues and establishing mental frameworks. When immersed back into the world's bustle, maintain vigilance over your thoughts to avoid slipping into unconscious patterns. Awareness of your speech, actions, and judgments aligns with your true self, preserving your emotional equilibrium. Returning to our former selves, reverting to familiar behaviors and thoughts, signifies dwelling in the past. When we embrace that old personality, we effectively choose to believe, behave, and think as we did before. How often do we fall into this pattern before we decide to stop? This is the essence of personal growth, deciding how we want to think and programming our minds accordingly. It's about setting intentions, focusing our attention, and repeating new beliefs until they become second nature. This process isn't complex. It's a matter of consistently reminding ourselves of the choices we want to make and the actions we want to take, even when they challenge us. Rehearsing these intentions primes our brains for action and reshapes our neural pathways. Consider how we want to feel after meditation, how much optimism and love for our future we can cultivate. If necessary, we'll remind ourselves of this feeling countless times until it naturally arises. This is the essence of personal evolution. Taking time for ourselves, disconnecting from daily life to reconnect with our aspirations is a crucial act of self-love. Those who emerge from meditation with less faith in their future than when they started may not have overcome their ingrained habits and beliefs. Conversely, those who believe more deeply in their potential have done the inner work required. If we find ourselves reverting to old patterns despite our commitment to change, we face a choice. Stay in that familiar space or seek support from others in similar circumstances, perpetuating a cycle of victimization. Yet, those who strive for transformation recognize that there is never a perfect moment to act. Instead, they pause, reconnect with their vision of the future, and reaffirm their commitment to becoming someone new. Life's events serve as opportunities to practice this transformation, to become the person we aspire to be. Through this ongoing process, we learn to catch ourselves before slipping into old habits and to remember our newfound consciousness. How many times must we falter before we cease forgetting and begin remembering? This is the pivotal moment of change. Let me clarify, it's no small feat guiding 2,000 individuals to align their minds and bodies. It requires persistent effort, countless repetitions to overcome personal barriers, and numerous opportunities for practice. Our goal is to equip people with tools that remain accessible when they reintegrate into their daily lives. It's not as daunting as it may seem if approached with the same dedication and intention when practiced alone. This dedication serves not just the collective, but everyone in one's life, fostering a distinct personal transformation. Some may dismiss this work as mere faith healing, a label I accept without hesitation at this point in my life. After all, isn't faith about believing in a thought regardless of external circumstances and surrendering to its potential outcome? It's like living as if our prayers have already been answered, a potent placebo effect indeed. Perhaps it's less about religious rigor and more about embodying that belief daily, stepping into each day as though our aspirations have already materialized. This mindset propels us into the realm of the unknown, where unexpected blessings await. The placebo effect illustrates the power of thought, which, when embraced emotionally, manifests into reality. Thoughts devoid of emotional investment remain latent, awaiting realization from the unknown. Transforming thoughts into experiences and wisdom marks our evolution as individuals. 
Consider your reflection in the mirror, not just your physical form, but also your consciousness and true self. Your life mirrors these deeper aspects. There's no ancient mystical school atop a Himalayan peak waiting to initiate us. Instead, life itself is our journey into greatness and spiritual wisdom. Perhaps you and I should view life as an opportunity to continuously elevate ourselves, transcending our limitations with expanded consciousness. This perspective aligns with pragmatism rather than victimhood. Embracing new paradigms often feels unnatural at first. It demands effort and discomfort because change alters our familiar identities. To me, true genius lies in embracing this discomfort and finding peace within it. Throughout history, many revered figures challenged conventional wisdom, initially labeled as heretics or fools, only to later be recognized as geniuses, saints, or masters. They achieved this transformation by daring to do what others deemed unnatural. To become extraordinary ourselves, we must also embrace the unnatural, to love in times of crisis, to show courage and peace amidst fear, to exhibit kindness amid hostility, and to surrender to possibilities when others strive to control outcomes. Smiling in adversity and cultivating wholeness amidst illness may seem counterintuitive, yet these choices, when consistently made, transcend norms and elevate us to a supernatural level. Most importantly, by embodying this supernatural state, we inspire others to do the same. Mirror neurons in our brains fire when we observe someone's actions, essentially mirroring their experiences. Witnessing acts of love, leadership, and self-healing can inspire us to embody similar behaviors and beliefs. Ultimately, the foundation of it all lies in believing in ourselves and recognizing the boundless potential within us and the universe around us. When you blend your belief in yourself as a subjective consciousness with your trust in an objective consciousness, you achieve a delicate balance of intention and surrender. Finding this equilibrium is challenging. Excessive intention leads to striving and falling short of your vision, while over-surrendering can breed laziness and apathy. However, when you unite clear intention with unwavering faith in possibility, you step confidently into the known, setting the stage for supernatural occurrences. I believe our truest selves emerge when we embody this state of being, when we feel so complete that the outcome becomes inconsequential. It's in this state that remarkable manifestations unfold effortlessly. Through my experiences witnessing profound healings worldwide, I've observed that true transformation arises when individuals release their sense of lack and relinquish control, allowing something greater to respond. While I don't claim to have all the answers, my greatest fulfillment comes from contributing to others' growth journeys. I've seen faces light up with transformation across diverse cultures, races, and genders when they shed self-limiting beliefs. One biological principle that captivates me is emergence, illustrated by schools of fish or flocks of birds moving synchronously without a visible leader. This unity isn't top-down, it arises collectively from each individual, connected through a shared consciousness beyond space and time. In these moments, the collective acts as one organism, demonstrating the power of unified intention. Society often conditions us to fear passionate leadership and monumental change, suggesting it invites downfall. Yet, throughout history, bold leaders who reshaped the world with profound messages often faced resistance, but ultimately prevailed. When we reflect on figures like Martin Luther King Jr., Mahatma Gandhi, Joan of Arc, William Wallace, Jesus of Nazareth, and Abraham Lincoln, there persists an unconscious stigma that visionary leaders must sacrifice their lives for truth. Perhaps now, however, we stand at a pivotal moment in history where it's more vital to live for truth than to die for it. Imagine if hundreds of thousands or even millions of people embraced a new consciousness grounded in possibility, aligned their actions with intentions, and lived by universal principles of love, kindness, and compassion. 
Such a collective shift could birth a new consciousness marked by true unity, where visionary leadership becomes so pervasive that removing it would be unthinkable. Committing daily to exemplifying our personal best and transcending selfish states of mind driven by stress hormones can collectively transform the world. As more of us evolve into more integrated human beings, our communities worldwide will naturally evolve, overshadowing the current reality defined by fear, competition, scarcity, hostility, greed, and deception. One of my concerns today is the intertwining of scientific research with self-interest and profit motives, raising doubts about the authenticity of the information we receive. It falls upon us to seek and discern the truth independently, envisioning a world where billions live harmoniously like a school of fish, united in uplifting thoughts and connected to unlimited possibilities. In this scenario, people would make inspired choices, exhibit altruistic behaviors, and create enlightening experiences, guided by expansive, selfless emotions rather than survival-based instincts. If we achieve this collective shift, a profoundly different world will emerge, one governed by an open-hearted creed. This is the vision I hold when I close my eyes to meditate, a world where humanity lives as energy connected to something greater, not merely as matter constrained by limitations. Thinking the same thoughts, performing the same actions, and experiencing the same emotions while secretly hoping for change in your life, is this something you can relate to? As your environment triggers familiar circuits in your brain, you naturally begin to think in alignment with what you know. Seeing the same people, visiting the same places, and doing the same routines at predictable times further reinforces this pattern. Essentially, your external environment activates specific neural circuits that keep you thinking within the boundaries of what is familiar and known to you. When you continuously think in alignment with your current reality, you inevitably continue to create more of the same in your life. This is where the quantum law remains steadfastly applicable. You are essentially thinking in accordance with everything familiar, thereby perpetuating the status quo. True change, however, demands thinking beyond your current environment. Throughout history, remarkable individuals like William Wallace, Mahatma Gandhi, Martin Luther King Jr., Queen Elizabeth I, and Joan of Arc understood this principle. They possessed visions and ideas that weren't perceptible to their senses. They couldn't see, smell, taste, or physically feel them. Yet, these visions were so vivid in their minds that they lived as if these realities were already unfolding. Can you believe in a future that your senses cannot yet perceive, but which you have envisioned so vividly in your mind that your brain begins to mirror the reality as if it has already occurred? Modern neuroscience confirms the possibility. Our brains and even our genes are highly adaptable. Recent studies in genetics reveal that gene expression is not fixed. It fluctuates based on experiences, growth, healing, and learning. Epigenetics particularly challenges the old notion that DNA alone determines our fate, showing instead how environmental factors can influence gene activity. Epigenetic changes in gene expression can even be passed down to future generations, raising intriguing questions about how traits and behaviors are inherited beyond simple genetic code. This understanding reshapes our view of destiny, suggesting that our choices and mental frameworks play a profound role in shaping not just our own lives, but potentially the lives of our descendants. In essence, by envisioning and consistently focusing on a future that transcends your current reality, you are not only reshaping your own brain, but also potentially influencing the trajectory of generations to come. This is the power of thinking beyond what is immediately evident, an ability that has been harnessed by visionaries throughout history to manifest extraordinary change. Let's draw an analogy between a genetic sequence and a blueprint. Imagine you have a blueprint of a house that you scan into your computer. Using software like Photoshop, you can manipulate its appearance on screen, altering various characteristics such as color, size, scale, dimensions, and materials. 
Despite these changes, the blueprint itself remains unchanged. Similarly, thousands of people could use different environmental variables to produce altered images, all based on that same original blueprint. Epigenetics takes this idea further by granting us the ability to influence genetic activity in profound ways. This paradigm shift allows us the freedom to activate our genes and modify our genetic outcomes. When I refer to turning on a gene through expression, I'm simplifying the process. Genes don't literally turn on or off. Instead, they are activated by chemical signals and express themselves by producing specific proteins. Just a quick question before we continue. I'm planning out some exciting new content and I'd love to hear from you. What type of videos do you enjoy watching the most? Do you have any suggestion what should my next video be about? Your opinion matters. Drop your suggestions in the comments below so I can create the content you want to see. Can't wait to hear your ideas. Let's go on. By changing our thoughts, emotions, reactions, and behaviors, such as adopting healthier lifestyles, we send new signals to our cells. In response, they express different proteins without altering the underlying genetic blueprint. Even though the DNA code remains constant, cells can create numerous variations of the same gene when activated differently. This ability to signal our genes represents a potential to reshape our future. Just as certain parts of the brain are hardwired, while others are plastic and adaptable through learning and experience. Genes also exhibit similar traits. Some genetic sequences are more readily activated, while others are more entrenched and less responsive due to their longer history in our genetic makeup. According to current scientific understanding, maintaining certain genes in an activated state while keeping others dormant depends significantly on our mental and emotional states. Persistent emotions like anger, depression, anxiety, or feelings of unworthiness and continually trigger the same genetic responses. This repetitive activation of genes can lead to the production of specific proteins associated with diseases and impair the body's regulatory mechanisms, ultimately contributing to health issues. In essence, when we think and feel in habitual patterns over extended periods, our internal chemical environment reinforces these patterns by consistently activating corresponding genes. Despite the body's resilience, prolonged exposure to such demands constrain its adaptive capacities, potentially leading to breakdowns in health and well-being. If we persist in these patterns for 10 or 20 years, our genes begin to deteriorate, leading them to produce lower quality proteins. To illustrate, consider what happens as we age. Our skin sags because collagen and elastin, which are crucial proteins, start being made from inferior materials. Similarly, our muscles weaken and atrophy because essential proteins like actin and myosin become compromised. To draw an analogy, think about the molds or dyes used to manufacture metal parts for cars. With each use, these molds endure forces like heat and friction that gradually wear them down. Over time, these worn molds produce parts that no longer fit properly together due to the diminished precision in their dimensions. The human body undergoes a similar process due to stress or repeated emotional states like anger, fear, or sadness. When we continually expose our DNA to these peptides used to create proteins, they begin to malfunction. This genetic malfunction occurs when we maintain routine and familiar conditions, triggering the same emotional responses through our thoughts, actions, and interactions with others. Essentially, by living in predictable patterns, we're steering ourselves towards an unwanted genetic destiny. If we merely replay emotional memories from the past, we're destined to replicate the genetic conditions of previous generations. Our bodies will reflect this stagnation as long as we persist in feeling the same way day after day. According to scientific understanding, our environment signals genes involved in our evolution. Therefore, if our environment remains unchanged and we continue to live by familiar thoughts, behaviors, and emotions, our genetic expression remains static. According to the quantum model, we possess the ability to emotionally signal our bodies and initiate a cascade of genetic responses without the need for direct physical experiences. 
This means we can evoke emotions purely through thought, regardless of whether we've actually won a race, lottery, or promotion. This underscores our capacity to create emotional states internally, shaping our genetic expression and ultimately influencing our health and well-being. We have the power to experience joy or gratitude even before the external circumstances align with our desires. By embodying these positive emotions deeply enough, our bodies start to believe we are already living in that desired reality. Consequently, we can activate our genes to produce new proteins and transform our physical state to match our envisioned future. If you are truly committed to change and taking responsibility for your life, it's a significant undertaking. When addressing an audience, I emphasize that attending the event was a personal choice, acknowledging their agreement to the principle of creating their own reality and taking responsibility for themselves. This perspective means there's no one else to blame if things don't go as planned. It's up to each individual to care for themselves. The fundamental question then arises, at what point do we stop believing we create our own lives? Often, when faced with adversity, there's a temptation to shift blame externally instead of owning our responses and reactions. Our habitual emotional responses can anchor us to past experiences, creating a loop where familiar emotions dictate our reactions to present circumstances. In my daily practice, I constantly challenge myself with this question. I've learned through meditation that preparing my mind and body is crucial. I don't conclude my meditation until I've cultivated a profound sense of appreciation and love for life. This state of mind allows me to create without limits as I'm connected to the expansive emotions of my envisioned future. Consistency in this practice is key. By regularly training myself to feel unlimited and connected to my future emotions, I'm actively engaged in life rather than observing from the sidelines. Those who struggle to manage their emotional responses in challenging situations often lack the practice of intentionally cultivating these emotions. We close our eyes during meditation to reduce the seductive pull of the external environment, remaining still amidst distractions like the urge to eat, drink, or engage with technology demonstrates our commitment to mastering our internal state. By conditioning ourselves to embody future emotions vividly and clearly visualizing our desired self, we inevitably confront unconscious thoughts that may attempt to derail us. In essence, this practice isn't just about feeling good temporarily. It's about rewiring our responses and preparing ourselves to manifest the life we envision. I want people not just to understand this concept, but to internalize it so deeply that they remain consciously aware at all times. I envision them being so attuned that no thought slips by their awareness unchecked. It starts with the daily practice of suppressing those old neural circuits and nerve cells that no longer serve us. As these circuits cease to fire together, they gradually lose their connections. This process is crucial for breaking down our old personality patterns. Consider this example of how we can initiate new genetic expressions through emotional engagement with future events. In Japan, researchers conducted a study on the impact of mental states on disease among patients with type 2 diabetes. These individuals typically manage their condition with insulin to regulate blood sugar levels. The study involved two groups. One watched a comedy show while the other attended a dull lecture. Afterward, both groups consumed a meal and their blood glucose levels were measured. The group that watched the comedy show had significantly lower post-meal blood sugar levels compared to those who attended the lecture. This unexpected result prompted researchers to explore further. They found that the joyful subjects exhibited altered gene expressions related to blood sugar regulation, despite their condition requiring insulin management. This study demonstrates how our emotions can influence genetic expression. By emotionally embracing a future event, like enjoying a comedy show, the participants triggered new signals from their brains to their cells. These signals activated genetic variations that facilitated natural blood sugar regulation. 
Emotions can switch on or off certain gene sequences, showcasing how our internal chemistry responds to our emotional states. There are instances where genetic expression changes dramatically and suddenly due to intense emotional reactions. For example, some people under extreme stress have experienced their hair turning gray overnight. Such cases illustrate how powerful emotions can alter our body's internal environment, affecting genetic expression almost instantly. Repeatedly mentally rehearsing an upcoming event and emotionally experiencing its anticipated emotions can rewire our brain circuits. By embracing the emotions of a future event before it physically occurs, we potentially activate new genetic pathways. This practice conditions our body to align with our envisioned reality, potentially leading to physical changes even before the desired outcome materializes. I often tell my children that their personality shapes their reality. If they want to change something in their lives, they need to examine their thoughts to see if they are beneficial, observe their behaviors to ensure they are self-loving, and reflect on the emotions they've internalized that have become part of their identity. Children grasp this concept naturally because from an early age, I've believed that if you provide them with the facts, they'll understand the principles. Children, due to mirror neurons, are more influenced by what they see us do rather than what we tell them. You can't expect them to keep their room tidy if yours is a mess because they'll subconsciously emulate your actions. During an interview for my book, someone asked about the terrible twos. I explained that in the first year, parents often find everything their child does adorable. Then, when the child turns one and begins exploring out of curiosity, parents start saying no to their actions. After a year of hearing no by age two, when you tell them to put on their shoes, they respond with no because they are mirroring the behavior they've observed. This demonstrates that children learn more from observation than instruction. Many of us have had moments where we realize we're behaving like our parents. This can be unsettling, but it's important to consider the likelihood of adopting our parents' behaviors. If our conscious awareness only triggers pre-patterned neural connections, we might think, feel, and act similarly to our parents. Over time, these inherited neural circuits become deeply ingrained due to repeated activation, making us predisposed to similar thought patterns and behaviors as our parents. Whether we've inherited tendencies toward anger, victimization, or insecurity, these traits are reinforced by our parents' habitual behaviors. As these neural pathways continue to fire together, they form stronger and more refined connections, further entrenching these behaviors in our own lives. Our consciousness tends to reside in the region of the brain governed by familiar neural pathways. Many people behave as if they have only one set Walt way of acting, often saying, that's just me, that's who I am. However, considering the influence of genetics, a more accurate statement would be, this is me choosing to activate inherited circuits from my parents. Although my brain is neuroplastic and capable of forming new neural networks, I'm currently relying on what's been ingrained since the beginning. That's my identity. Upon studying this phenomenon, it became clear that without forming new synaptic connections in life, we're confined to using only our inherited ones. This limits our mind to expressing our genetic predispositions. How then can we expand beyond this initial neural inheritance? How can we enhance the brain's hardware? By adding even a few new synaptic connections to the existing matrix, we create numerous new pathways for the brain to operate, fostering novel sequences and patterns. Our genetic makeup is merely the starting point of our neurological potential. To evolve personally and as a species, we must augment and modify what we've been given. Our ability to develop a deeper sense of self hinges on creating new synaptic connections in response to our environment and leveraging the brain's plasticity. Anyone actively engaged in life today has likely sensed an acceleration, a quickening of events. This perception of time's acceleration is a construct of our minds, shaped by our past experiences and future expectations. In our information-rich world, ignorance becomes a choice. Access to knowledge is no longer restricted to authorities. It's at our fingertips. 
With discernment, as we navigate through abundant information, we gain empowerment and a deeper understanding of our world. Suddenly, new possibilities unfold before you as you awaken to information previously unknown. This newfound knowledge enhances awareness, which in turn expands consciousness. Energy is intricately tied to consciousness, and a global shift in energy is currently underway. This shift impacts paradigms that no longer resonate with this heightened consciousness, leading to unraveling in political, economic, journalistic, environmental, educational, religious, and medical systems. This unraveling isn't about victimhood, but signifies a necessary evolution in consciousness. From a soul perspective, this is the moment we've prepared for, a pivotal time in the Milky Way. It's not about one individual, but a collective emergence of consciousness, a unity of mind and heart. Control over individuals often relies on manipulating emotions through misinformation. Media, television, and advertisements wield great influence by altering emotional states. Many people unconsciously depend on external stimuli to regulate their emotions. My aim is to provide scientifically grounded information that empowers individuals to recognize and pursue these possibilities. By aligning intentions with actions, people can transform their experiences, reshaping their brain's neural connections through learning enriched by personal experience. Ultimately, this process culminates in emotions like worthiness, self-love, and gratitude, which solidify these newfound understandings in both mind and body. When we rely solely on our inherited neural circuits, we inevitably become creatures of our genetics. But there's an alternative. Synaptic connections in the brain can be formed in two primary ways, through learning new information and experiencing new things. Each time we acquire knowledge, the brain undergoes changes. Similarly, novel experiences imprint new neurological patterns. Conversely, if we neglect learning and rarely seek new experiences, our synaptic connections remain limited. We then rely heavily on the initial neural networks inherited from our genetic lineage. According to Hebb's model, repeatedly activating the same genetic circuits strengthens their wiring, locking us into predetermined patterns of behavior and thought. To break free from these genetic predispositions, continuous learning and experiencing new things are essential. When we say we've learned something new neurologically, it means we've structured synaptic circuits to store that information as memory. Changing habits requires understanding the triggers that lead to undesired behaviors, such as overeating or smoking. It involves consciously challenging and overcoming these ingrained thoughts and behaviors with intentional actions. This process demands a level of energy and determination greater than the entrenched neural programs and emotional attachments in our bodies. By doing so, we signal a new direction to our body, energizing it with a glimpse of our desired future. Managing emotions like guilt, shame, or unworthiness involves deciding whether these emotions belong in our future. Continuously observing our mental and emotional states allows us to objectively assess and correct our behaviors. Just as reviewing a video helps refine athletic skills, Observing ourselves aids in self-correction. Ultimately, the process of change hinges on becoming aware of our unconscious patterns and actively choosing who we no longer wish to be. This signifies retiring our old self and stimulating our body to crave emotional rewards associated with our desired future. Understanding this biological and neurological process empowers us to create a new self through emotional anticipation and mental rehearsal, where the body responds similarly to actual experiences and thoughts fabricated in the mind. I believe that our personality shapes our unique reality. To alter our personal reality, we must initiate change within ourselves, as nothing shifts externally unless we change internally. Research indicates that about 90% of our daily thoughts are repetitions from previous days. These familiar thoughts lead to consistent choices, behaviors, experiences, and emotions, which in turn reinforce our neural circuits, biochemistry, and genetic expression. 
This repetitive firing and wiring of the same brain circuits solidifies our identity and personality over time. Neural cells that fire together wire together, making these patterns more automatic. By midlife, approximately 95% of who we are consists of ingrained behaviors, subconscious habits, and conditioned emotions that feel intrinsic to our being. Significant life events like crises, trauma, illness, or hitting rock bottom can provide a jolt that temporarily lifts the veil of our habitual self-perception. In these moments, we gain a clearer view of ourselves and our patterns of thought, speech, and action. This heightened awareness often prompts introspection and a more conscious examination of our feelings. Meditation, derived from the Latin word meaning to become familiar with, underscores the importance of becoming aware. It serves as a tool to cultivate consciousness and observe our beliefs and perceptions objectively. The first step toward changing our reality is thus to raise our awareness and question the unconscious beliefs that shape our self-perception and life experiences. Reflect on what beliefs and perceptions you've unconsciously accepted about yourself and your life. Identifying and challenging these beliefs is crucial to creating a new state of being. Often, these beliefs are so deeply ingrained that we aren't even aware of holding them, having absorbed cues from our environment without critical scrutiny. To begin a journey of personal transformation, we must first become aware of these hidden beliefs and perceptions, paving the way for intentional change and the creation of a new reality aligned with our aspirations. Regardless of the path we choose, the moment we adopt a belief, it profoundly influences not just our performance, but also the decisions we make. Consider the study involving women taking math tests, those who initially read fabricated research claiming men were inherently superior in math due to genetics scored lower than those who read that any advantage stemmed from stereotype biases. Despite both reports being false, men aren't inherently better at math than women. Those who were primed to believe they had a genetic disadvantage performed worse. Similarly, white men informed that Asians typically outperform whites on a test they were about to take showed lower scores when primed with this false belief. These instances illustrate how unconscious beliefs significantly impact our outcomes, regardless of their accuracy. Reflecting on this, examine this list of common limiting beliefs to see if any resonate with you unknowingly. I'm not good at math. I'm shy. I'm short-tempered. I'm not smart or creative. I'm just like my parents. Men shouldn't show vulnerability. I can't find a partner. Women are inferior to men. My race or culture is superior. These beliefs are typically rooted in past experiences, but their validity in the present may be questionable. Even if true in the past, they may no longer hold true now. However, our attachment to these beliefs and the emotions they evoke often blinds us to contrary evidence. We tend to perceive these beliefs as immutable truths rather than ideas that can be revised. Strong beliefs can obscure contradictory evidence right in front of us, perpetuating negative impacts on our well-being and happiness. Recognizing and challenging these beliefs is crucial to fostering personal growth and achieving a more fulfilling life. Changing beliefs might seem daunting, but it's entirely achievable. Imagine the possibilities if you could successfully challenge your unconscious beliefs. Instead of feeling perpetually short on time, what if you embraced the belief that time is abundant and you accomplish everything you set out to do? Rather than thinking the universe is working against you, what if you believed it's supportive and benevolent? How might this empowering perspective transform your thoughts, actions, and daily experiences? When you start changing a belief, the process begins with acknowledging its potential to change. Next, infuse this realization with heightened emotion to amplify its impact. Avoid getting caught up in how or when biological shifts will occur. This analytical approach can detract from your receptiveness to change. Simply make a definitive decision. When the energy behind this decision surpasses entrenched mental patterns and emotional habits, you transcend your past self. Your body responds to this new mindset, enabling tangible transformation. Reflect on past experiences 
where you resolved to alter aspects of yourself or your life. Recall the moment you committed, disregarding immediate feelings or circumstances, determined to enact change instantly. That surge of motivation signaled a shift into a heightened state of being. You were effectively transmitting new information to your body, moving beyond familiar routines and embracing a new future. However, disrupting entrenched habits can provoke discomfort as your body instinctively seeks the comfort of familiarity. This challenge underscores why change is often difficult. Yet, through meditation and deep self-awareness, you can intimately acquaint yourself with both your old and emerging selves. The more you practice this awareness, the less you'll slip into old patterns. Empower others with these insights and tools, encouraging them to embark on their own journeys of personal transformation. With practice, they too can find fulfillment in the process of change. Sure, but if you're not guided by a clear vision of the future, you'll likely default to reliving memories of the past, falling into predictable patterns in your daily life. Whether encountering coworkers, spouses, or engaging in routine tasks like Zoom calls or checking your phone, these interactions shape your thoughts and emotions based on familiar neural networks you formed through repeated experiences. Rather than your personality dictating your reality, it's often your immediate environment reinforcing your existing mindset. Each person, place, or thing triggers a neurological response tied to past encounters, influencing how you think and feel. When this cycle persists without a new vision for the future, your environment continues to mold your perceptions. The key lies in recognizing that our thoughts and emotions create our lived experiences. Persistently dwelling on past challenges or successes conditions your body and mind to relive those emotional states. This ongoing conditioning shapes your daily existence, potentially leading to a predetermined genetic outcome if left unchecked. Habits further entrench these patterns as repetitive actions and emotional responses become automatic, overshadowing conscious intent. Essentially, your body adapts to execute these routines more efficiently than your conscious mind can direct, effectively surrendering your free will to ingrained habits. Breaking free from this cycle begins with setting a definitive intention and amplifying it with emotional energy. By committing to a new internal reality, something greater than your past experiences, you initiate a transformative process. This shift not only rewires your neurocircuitry, but also disrupts emotional ties to past conditioning. As you elevate your energy towards this new belief, your body responds with heightened emotional states, signifying a shift from past bound to present centered living. Ultimately, this heightened energy manifests as new emotions, fueling a profound change in how you experience and interpret the world around you. It's about reclaiming agency over your thoughts and emotions, liberating yourself from the constraints of past conditioning to embrace a future shaped by intentional, empowered living. When we experience emotions like invincibility, courage, empowerment, or compassion, it's not just a psychological state. It's a transformative energy that directly impacts our biology, neurocircuitry, and genetic expression. This phenomenon isn't merely chemical. It parallels practices seen in firewalkers, glasswalkers, and snake handlers who intentionally shift their mental and physical states. By steadfastly holding onto this intention to transition, their decision generates internal changes within their brains and bodies. This internal shift empowers them to defy external environmental conditions for extended periods as their heightened energy acts as a protective shield that transcends mere biology. Interestingly, our neurochemistry isn't the sole responder to heightened energy states. Receptor sites on cell surfaces are astonishingly 100 times more sensitive to energy and frequency than to physical chemical signals like neuropeptides. Scientific research consistently highlights how electromagnetic forces influence cellular biology and genetic regulation across the electromagnetic spectrum, including microwaves, radio waves, x-rays, and more. 
These specific frequencies exert significant influence over DNA, RNA, protein synthesis, cell growth, division, and even tissue and organ formation. Essentially, these cellular processes are fundamentally shaped by energy signals. This intricate dance of energy and biology extends to our DNA, including the often dismissed junk DNA, which contains encoded information awaiting activation. Nature, in its efficiency, wouldn't waste such potential without providing a means to unlock it. Could our own energy and consciousness serve as the key to accessing these latent abilities? If true, then altering our energy could potentially unlock our innate capacity for authentic healing and transformation. Changing our energy state isn't merely a shift in mood. It triggers a cascade of neurological rewiring, new chemical emotions, and epigenetic changes. The outcome? We effectively become new beings, shedding old neurocircuitry, emotional dependencies, and genetic expressions that upheld our previous state of being. In essence, the person we once were becomes history, replaced by a version more aligned with our true potential. If you enjoyed this video and found it insightful, please consider subscribing to our channel for more content like this. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell icon so you never miss an update from us. Feel free to share this video with your friends and family who might also find it valuable. Thank you for watching and supporting my channel.